if you have the right personalities, you can definitely figure it out. It's been awesome because while we're business partners, like I said, we're also friends. So a lot of the times we do business trips and stuff like that, we get to also catch up because like I said, there's five of us, there's two of us in New York, one of us in Florida, one of us in LA. Today, we have a very special guest with us from Los Angeles, California, businessman and photographer, Jack Nelson. Thanks for joining us today, man. How are you doing? I'm doing good. Thanks for having me. I'm excited to be here. Yeah, man. We're excited too. So we got a bunch of good questions here for you, which I personally don't know you very well, so I'm going to learn a lot here too. Maybe not for Caleb, but the first question. So what does kind of the day-to-day -day life look like for you as a photographer? Day-to-day uh, -day for a photographer is it's really hard to say what a day-to-day -day is because it's such a versatile job. Every single day is almost different, even when you're shooting with the same client every month or you're, you have a set schedule of shoots. Every single day is bringing new things and new problems, whether it's some days I'll be fully behind the camera doing shoots and you know what a what people think a photographer does mainly which i would say probably equates for about 30 percent of being a photographer is like being behind the camera and everything and then all the rest of it is being behind a computer which is like the funniest side that people don't understand in the old days it, with film and stuff and there wasn't post-production as much it would be a lot more behind the camera so you would take the photos and then send them off to the lab get them produced and then they would kind of be as is you can obviously do slight stuff but not what you can do now with photoshop ai all the, whatever you need to do to it right making the photo like if you're doing a campaign doing a crazy edit on it or if you're doing simple e-com to like perfectly white out everything and get every wrinkle out of the t-shirt and stuff um, so obviously now today there's a lot more post-production so being a photographer now is a lot more on the computer than you would think and a lot less on the behind the camera which is really interesting but it's also why I got into it because I'm more of like I started in the Photoshop Adobe world as an editor more so and through that, I kind of just fell in love with the full process and wanting to be in charge of the whole thing from start to finish in terms of what the image started as in camera and then at what it comes out in final. And just that whole process then started me getting into like shooting more of my own and whatnot. But yeah, it's a really the day to day is unique because a lot of freelance jobs are like this, where you have the actual job as the you know photographer, right? Like I do photography. But then you have all the stuff that like goes with behind the scenes of photography. And then you have all the business stuff, which is all the paperwork, all the, you know, all the simple stuff like taxes, even though it's not simple. But like that is simple then when you take it into like your own like production company or something like that, because the day to days of like actually running the business and setting up logistics for shoots and stuff like that becomes a lot more of your day to day. In the work that me and Caleb have been doing in the last couple of weeks, what little editing I do, everything that I see Caleb do, there's a lot that I didn't realize. Yeah. <laughs> so I totally get that. So, you know, when it kind of comes to your photo shoots, if there was anything that was kind of a consistency, you know, what are some of those things that you do for every shoot that you kind of notice uh consistency with photo shoots is one is just your mindset going into it um every single photo shoot you need to be having fun it's kind of like the underlying secret sauce i would say it's like it doesn't matter what art you're creating or any like you need to be having fun and enjoying the process and being creative and allowing yourself to be creative when you're not like having fun and you're tied down with certain like limit or maybe someone on set is not being as easy to work with, then it starts to inhibit what is actually the product that you guys are creating on set. So that's like a really like important one for me, even though it's people can take that too far and then not take their job seriously enough. It's definitely a fine line of being fun on set and getting the job done. That's definitely one thing. So just being consistent with being like fun and good to work with. Easy going guy that, you know, you want to relate with everyone or girl. You want to relate with anyone on set you want to you know what you want to create relationships just like any other job and you don't want to be a problem to work with caleb saw that a lot of this firsthand where um you could be as talented as you want but if you're not bringing those things to the set and you're not easy to work with and you're not 
working with certain clients that um, a long-term client versus a short-term client, if you're not working with those long-term clients a little more to kind of give them everything they want in terms of product while like protecting yourself on a business side, those are crucial things that you want to bring to the set and relationships just on a constant basis so that you're fun, you're creative, and then you're also good to work with. Like no one wants to work with someone who's who's not fun. It's just as simple as that. You know, there's enough creative people in the world that you can't really be mean. You can't be not fun to work with. You can't be a bully, all these things. Another thing that's consistent is depending on the shoot, for example, e-com, I do a lot of e-commerce photography, which just for the audience or anyone who doesn't know, white background on body with a model showing the customers, whether you go on Nordstrom's and you want to see the fit of the dress or something, you'll obviously see a flat, you'll see a flat lay first. And then typically you'll see a uh, on model picture. So like that's the e-com and that's a lot of my bread and butter and what I do for companies, even though it's not as creative, there's a level of perfection that comes with that, which is what I love about it. So it's not as creative because it's on white and very like you know, straight and everything like that. Like, you know, no facial expressions, but there's a level of perfection to it. So like every single shoot, you need to bring that consistency every single time, whether it's like simple, like how the model is standing and directing them, whether they're, or their facial tones and stuff like that. So when you're doing e-com, you have to bring that consistency to set every time, because if you shoot, just a tiny example, if you shoot one collection 12 inches higher, it's going to have a different view on the website. And like, it's just tiny, tiny things like that, that you got to bring that and think about that every single time you're doing a similar set. So those are the few things that are more consistent. When I was watching you edit photos and like editing your photos back to back to back and like did that little animation, it was crazy to see like how precise and exact each photo was and watching you edit how precise you have to be to like make that happen and while like on set as well too. Just seeing that, it's really cool to see. A lot of tiny stuff. A big one was the front and the back photos for e-com. You don't want your a customer going on the website and it Maybe the back is a little like off centered or maybe their feet aren't as straight. And it doesn't look like there's just boop, 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 boop when they go back and forth between the photos. So tiny things like that, it's just everything has to be dialed in. Going on the opposite side of it with the more non-structured photo shoots, how do you prepare for that? And while you're photographing more like candid photos, what do you kind of like look for? while doing one of those photo shoots a lot more of those photo shoots my personal project is that more what you mean or maybe like if a brand comes to me with like a loose idea and not like a creative deck that as well as maybe like following a creator around for like a week or like kind of like in real life circumstances where you don't really have like a studio to like all back on for like those perfections make sure that lighting okay and everything and getting more like candid photos through that as well good question it's definitely a weakness of mine because i am a studio photographer mainly in which like i like to say like i play god in my studio because lights everything is controlled by me so like the world and the atmosphere is everything is controlled by me when you step outside then or you have the sun you have all different elements that are then coming into your photo which you have no control over and you have to predict the normal stuff of doing dandelion photography which is kind of following a celebrity or doing something documenting their day-to-day -day life and stuff like that that stuff comes with experience and like have knowing your camera and knowing your settings and then knowing what kind of shots you do like it's a lot of experience as well because of where you need to be in relation to the subject that you're shooting for example if i'm shooting just a day in and like an NBA player's life, I'm going to want a certain shot when they're walking, let's say they're walking in the practice facility and there's a bunch of people waiting for signatures or something like that outside. I'm going to like preemptively know that that's what I want to shoot and position myself so that I can get that. And I love shooting low angle stuff, make people look really powerful and shooting that kind of up angles and stuff. So like a lot of that stuff is just like in my head beforehand. If you show up without any ideas in your mind, you kind of find yourself sh just shooting. Like that can be good because you could shoot 10 photos and maybe get away with one of them. But if you have ideas for them beforehand and you have rough, like, okay, I want one that's like where the player is interacting with the fan, or I want one where he's shooting, or I want one where he's, you know, getting his shoes on. You can make sure you have those in your head. So when, you know, you see they start to happen, you go, okay, boom. And in your head, you have a picture already for where you're going to shoot it and what angle and all not. That comes with experience for sure in terms of knowing what you want to shoot and the, what the customer or client wants to shoot as well. Because certain people will like certain stuff, that takes time to learn as well. And as you work with them over 
and over and over again. Um, you'll learn like, oh, okay, yo, they really like these type of photos, like a lot of interacting with the fans' photos, or they really like the photos where they have good form or something like that, right? So everyone has like specific stuff that you want to look out for. And then in terms of like in the studio, how I will prep for anything that isn't as planned. If someone hits me up for more like digital, it's a lot more cut and dry, uh, not as creative. But if someone hits me up and wants to do a shoot for a couple hours and sends me a rough mood board, we'll take that mood board and kind of take four images from it. Most of the time is what happens is we merge them all together into like one cohesive idea and kind of go and build our set or like how we're styling the model or everything around that. And then from there, the second we start shooting, everything is free range where whatever our inspo was, we twist it always. And I think that's the really important part of staying away from feeling someone's style because everyone takes inspiration, right? You have to. This world is filled with it. It's constantly absorbing stuff. So it's like how you can take it into your own brain and then output it again in your own unique way. And I think that's like really important about like taking a mood board, seeing the general vision and then putting your own touch on it when it's happening, because you can kind of plan for all it to look a certain way. And then from there, your vision from what's spitting out on the camera, going up on the monitors, from what the model's seeing or the stylist is suggesting. As a team, you kind of come together and can create more shocking photos, like that have that initial shock factor, but then even more because you just let yourself run with it and you be creative. That's like the most important part. You can't stifle yourself. And those ones are more fun because you never know where they end up. I had one model that I shot a couple of weeks ago that a lot of the mood boards were very light, very like soft and dreamy vibes, which we went for that, but it turned into more of a dark dreamy instead of light dreamy. And that was only from a mistake of like in our testing of getting the lights going, I only shot the rear light off for me to test my lighting setup. And the client loved how that looked. And from there, we kind of, you know, started to go in down that channel, right? Where it's like, all of a sudden we were going to go up here but the next thing you know we're kind of okay well let's try this out let's see what this looks like you just never know what you stumble upon you keep mentioning creativity i think that's important and something me and caleb are starting to realize too like of course there has to be organization behind everything but the more creative you can be the more you can stand out us as content creators are trying to do you mentioned it a little bit about just trying to be a nice person and trying to keep clients that way what has gone into finding and maintaining a lot of the connections that you have and the people you work with before you find any of the clients or anything like that you're out there in the world and you never know who you're going to meet and you never know like the person standing next to you at this event or the person standing next to you at the bar or this or that and you get in a conversation with them you just never know what they do that idea was what like kind of birthed my career in photography was just that full openness and talking to everyone in a it was a time in my life where i was like everything i wanted to do was a creative project so i didn't want to hang out with anyone unless we were doing something creative sorry i just got sidetracked you're gonna have to hit me with that one again sorry whole different memory i was gonna tell a story that was not relevant <laughs> Yeah, we were just asking about, you know, how did you find your connections and what kind of goes into keep your connections. It's a lot of just like normal people skills and treating your clients as if they're, they're your friends, but in a in a business manner. So like over delivering is a huge one. So, you know, if you give them a one week delivery turnaround or something, you're never want to get deliver on the eighth day. You want to deliver on the sixth day because you're working with businesses at the end of the day as a photographer you're being hired by other businesses that have all types of stuff going on so to be that one link in the chain that doesn't cause any issues ever every single time you shoot is invaluable the brands love that because it's you know a lot of the fashion world is a scramble last minute we just got these products in or we just got these we need to shoot or you know we're rushing this sale all of a sudden and need this content so you really need to over deliver in terms of not just when you're doing it but also what you are willing to do for them if they're a client for example some of my longer clients that i've kept for over like two years or something you want to protect your own integrity as like an artist and your own work and everything but then you also want to respect them as a business and keeping relationship going by kind of working them as a, with a business. For example, one of the businesses I worked with, and I'm not, I won't name it, but they had a certain issue with a shirt and I worked with them so that basically their costs were as low as possible. So they didn't lose 
as much money as they were like already going to. And by doing that, it's like more of a personal level. I don't want their business to be harmed by like some side thing. And I don't want to then ruin any relationship. So you kind of want to be just helpful in any regard possible. You know, a lot of times companies will go through a lot of turnover in which if you're there for a long time, you're working with a lot of new people then that you are as a contracted worker, you're not there day to day, but you know, all the employees that you work with at your clients companies those people too like they're coming in every three months or so you know in this fashion world you got a really high turnaround with jobs and stuff so you're working with a lot of new people all the time which those people are then going to other companies is what a lot of people don't realize is that and back to that original like you never know who you're going to run into so everyone you have to be nice to on set you have to be easy to work with at the end of the day if you're both of those things and you give a great product why would they look for someone else for the next shoot you know it's just giving them like like why why would you you have a clear answer here and it's jack or whichever photographer or whatever creative industry you are if you can provide not only a good product but also an easy to work with system then they're going to go with you 100% of the time because it's just one less thing they have to deal with as a business. When it comes to your clients, again, not to name them, but I'm sure you've traveled to a lot of cool places for your work. You know, what are some of your favorite places you've been? I go to New York a lot and I have, I definitely love New York City. So every time going to New York City to do any type of shoot is a lot of fun and it's always an adventure because New York City is just you never know what you're going to get. That's part of why I love my job. Every single day, you never know what you're going to get. Some places the cameras brought me. I went on a trip to Colorado, which was a lot of fun because one of my clients works and plays in the NBA. He was doing um, a trip that he wanted documented. Um, so I got to go along on that trip and film video, everything, photograph all the activities that we were doing. And that was a really fun one because we we're out in the middle of nowhere. So you just find yourself like all of a sudden like, hey, you get a call like, hey, you, what are you doing for the next five days? Like, you want to come out to the middle of nowhere in Colorado and shoot us? And next thing you know, you're out there and you're getting paid to just like hang out with people, shoot stuff, which you love to do anyway, hopefully if you're a photographer. So the camera like can definitely bring you a lot of places. I know people who are nonstop travel based on their job just continually going to new places if they're a travel photographer like i have one friend who does a lot of vlogs his kids in bali every single month like doing different videos with his drones and all types of stuff you can really with photography you can use it to get to a lot of destinations and have a lot of fun with it too doing your job which i think is awesome because it comes out of nowhere too you never really know what's going to happen or who needs to shoot what vacation or what trip or in what country or even what state dominican republic i shot a trip going to dominican republic that was amazing i've never been there so that was a lot of fun like i said just brings you places you don't expect new york city like while i have been to these cool vacations and shot that kind of stuff there's nothing like new york city though so every time i go back there it's just an adventure it definitely is a nice perk of your line of work it seems me and caleb have been trying to travel and see some cool places while we're young that's advice that we've been given so definitely been trying to see the world see yeah see the world i come from a family that has two british parents my whole family is pretty much overseas in terms of extended family and grandparents and cousins and everything so my whole life i've been told to travel and see the whole world and i was lucky enough to study in italy as well i'm in college so a lot of my uh before i even knew that i was going to be into photography was about you know seeing the world and seeing different cultures and different experiences and that and i think adding a, a camera to my hand just you know improve that time because not only do i get to make money doing that thing now but i also get to like do something that i love both work and travel like together and make money it's just beautiful you can't really complain when all three of those things come together with travel you know, it seems like you kind of go between East and West Coast a decent amount. How do you kind of manage that? It seems like it could be really time consuming. and It's definitely hard. The main way I would say I plan it is around my long-term clients that are in LA. With all my long-term clients in LA, I have at least three, a three-week buffer roughly on when they will book me for another shoot. So that's like roughly like how I kind of schedule when I'm going to be in LA, what and when I need to be in LA. Then I have also clients in New York where it's kind of similar, not as long term clients, but still clients that I'll go in and out for and do that kind of stuff. That's more comes and goes. 
and like it, it's hard to plan. And then one other reason I go to New York a lot is because I started a business with one of my friends called Closet Tours. Shout out to Dan. Uh, he is a, a stylist in the NBA and him and I were talking years ago with a couple of the other founders and we basically saw all these uh, NBA players love fashion, obviously love buying new clothes and all this thing. And they only wear it once or twice. Um, so we took what you you know grailed or ebay or, uh, and all these you know resale sites and we made a new site particular to these um individuals whether it was a celebrity or an athlete or someone of somewhat like status in you know culture or however you want to say it so that business is called closet tour so what i i do all the photography and media for it so roughly like once a month I'll go out there to shoot a lot of flat lays of all the all the new product we've gotten in. So that's one of my things too. So it's kind of planning around those three things and that, that's kind of how I hop back and forth. Uh, yeah, but you just gotta like, the, the longer the client's with you, you kind of put their priority a little bit higher than everyone else and it kind of stacks down from there. So if someone's been working with you for years and you have a really good relationship with them, you know, that photo shoot is gonna go above someone who's been working with me for a month, a month, just stuff like that. So that's kind of how I plan the back and forth. I get tactic. I've gotten pretty numb to the flying just because it's just become so much. I'm getting good miles. That's what I was just going to say. It sounds like you probably have had a lot of flight miles in your life. Yeah, a lot of flight miles. Well, even before work, definitely adjusted to the plane. You talked some stuff about closet tours already. What has your experience been with being more on the business end of it, helping with a startup and building this company? And what has your kind of experience been? It's been fun. You know, and starting any new business is always a lot of fun. Before photography, I ran my own businesses in other fields. So I was already used to running the back end of businesses. I'd say the main part about Closet Tours is working with partners. There's five of us that are all owners of the business. With that comes a lot of pros with, and also a lot of difficulties in terms of, you know, having to work with people because all the other businesses, I, it was just me. So it's a lot more of working with the team and seeing who wants what and then how we're going to balance everyone's expectations as well as roles in the company. It's definitely been a new journey for me in terms of that. It's been a lot of fun though because a lot of the guys are my friends to begin with, which typically isn't recommended when you start a business, but if you have the right personalities, you can definitely figure it out. It's been awesome because while we're business partners, like I said, we're also friends. So a lot of the times we do business trips and stuff like that, we get to also catch up because like I said, there's five of us, there's two of us in New York, one of us in Florida, one of us in LA, which is me, and then one in Colorado. So we're all over the place. So when, when we meet up and we do business stuff, it is a lot of fun then because we definitely work hard play hard when we go and we do our work trips and whatnot not only are we friends and stuff but like i think that's like really important in growing is like continuing to enjoy your youth i don't want to be the 40 year old who's like all a millionaire all of us like you know finally a millionaire but like no experiences and no fun and all that stuff like i love getting into different stories and you know all types of stuff that could happen so like i'm big on traveling around like i said and enjoying all the just adventures that come with that but it could be hard working with your friends for sure you can definitely get on each other's nerves a lot easier than business partners might um, because you have stuff that's outside of the business coming into it which is difficult at the end of the day you just got to always remind yourself that like everyone is on the same page everyone wants to do the same goal and there's going to be ups and downs. There's going to be tiffs, uh, as my mom would say, like arguments and stuff. But just like friends and normal stuff, you get through it and works out in the end, hopefully. <laughs> you know, but it's definitely interesting. It's definitely interesting because it's just a lot of personality. Five different people. This was a question we had for you later, but I figured it'd be kind of appropriate to ask now. Since me and Caleb and one of our other buddies kind of started up this project that we're doing, do you have any type of advice for us that you think could be helpful? I don't know the other two personalities. I know <laughs> Caleb, obviously, um, and I know I know his, what kind of personality he has and everything. Um, so it really depends what personalities and everything. But the main overarching thing is to just listen to each other. And even though percentage wise, maybe some people are higher or 
some people own more of the business or maybe do more work and stuff like that. You all have to kind of think of yourself on the same team. If there's vibes where it's like everything is, uh, and obviously there's going to be someone who has the most percentage. You know, it's very rare that three people, 33% or what, you know, and I don't know your guys' situation or not. You always have to, at the end of the day, respect one another and listen to each other. Man, and if you don't do that, then it's kind of pointless having you all there because that's, that's what's powerful is having like three minds, and going back and forth and the discourse that happens and what you guys just debate in terms of, okay, like, let's do this video or like, you know, I'm thinking we do this with creative or we start to ask these kind of questions or chop it up like this. You got to hear each other out equally and don't bring in any of those brainstorming things. Don't bring in like, oh, well, like I'm, I'm more powerful. I'm, I'm more this. Everyone in those brainstorming sessions and generally should be treated the same and with respect. That's a huge thing. It's just like when people hire me for photos, like no one wants to work with people. It's not fun to work with, you know? So like, you want to be easy to work with. You want to be fun. You want to like do your job and even then some. And if you're respecting one another and like actually listening and being like, oh, hey, like he has something to say. Uh, let me hear it. Like, let me actually put down what I'm doing right now and let me like listen to his business, give him the respect, then it can only really go from up from there because you got three minds now and that's the real power. I was gonna say, since you know Caleb's personality, you can understand how damn near impossible it is to work with him. <laughs> yeah, well, Caleb's a unique one. <laughs> just, just kidding, of course. Just in the, like the three or four weeks we've been doing this already, it's been really good. We're excited for sure for the future. Yeah, it's all about the vibes, you know? If y'all having fun, good vibes, then you just want the best for the business. What else is there? You just kind of keep ticking. We've been having a lot of fun so far. We've met a lot of cool people and talking to a lot of cool people. And it's going to turn into whatever you guys make it, you know, like whatever you put into it is going to come out. And then also with each other's relationships too, because that's also important. I don't know how long you guys have been friends and whatnot, but you don't want to ruin stupid stuff over just like business or like, just like not respecting one another or like, you know, getting in arguments about let's do this video or this video like no like, and it's easy to say but like most important thing is having fun with your friends and running a business with your friends so if your friend isn't there anymore you just lost your most important thing mm -hmm. like that's what i like is about running businesses with friends is there's a lack of while it can be bad there's a lack of seriousness to it which allows you to then be more fun and creative and then kind of pump things out a lot easier all right i got my caleb roast in so go ahead <laughs> Always got to get one Caleb Rose then. I, I'm always the punching bag with uh, the company, but you know, <laughs> I'll get them back eventually. But yeah, I, I just like the level of trust, uh, what friends can be in business. There's already like a sense of trust when going into business with friends that you don't have to like gain with other random people that you're maybe business with definitely and if you trust them too like with the vision like if you trust that you guys both have the same vision then you're gonna trust that he's getting his job done he's gonna trust that you're getting your job done and like everything just sails smoothly if you're stepping on each other's toes and you don't trust each other then that's when like you start to hit road bumps yes sir yes sir right absolutely one of the questions that i wanted to ask too because with your experience with, with your previous businesses and photographers or at least when i'm like videoing i'm kind of like a fly on a wall and i can like absorb a lot of information or have you like absorbed any information that's helped you grow closet tours through working with other companies while being like a photographer that you kind of seen like the behind the scenes of companies that help you with closet tours even though i'm not really in charge of logistics or anything to do with inventory and closet tours i get to see that of companies that have, at a higher level when i go in to shoot for the for various companies uh, most of the time i'm in their offices or their warehouses and you know, working with their people. So like you do get to be in their office and see just a loose idea of like what's going on in terms of product and whatnot. That has been an interesting thing that I get to bring to closet tours. And then more so though, is like all the, all the planning that goes into not just like marketing ideas and campaigns, but we do closet tours, which is the marketplace. And then also another factor of it is our closet tours videos. So we do, best way to put it is like MTV Cribs for celebrities' closets, kind of showing off what pieces are in there, when they wore it, what kind of events they wore it to maybe, if they have a certain story with it. Also showing what clothes they're going to be putting onto the website. So like this is going to be available, like check this out at Closet Tours, yada, yada. With that, you know, I get to see these bigger companies that I work with and speak with the marketing people and whatnot and see how far out everything is planned and how meticulous and how many steps steps goes into each rollout, whether it's a campaign shoot or it's just um, 
just one shoot with an influencer or something that's on a smaller scale like that, you really get to see the amount of work that's put into it. So then when you're running your own business, you're like, okay, I'm a smaller business. There's less of us, but that doesn't mean that all that stuff can't get done. If we all grind, we can all still do that stuff. You just have to know that you have to do that stuff and you have to be planning weeks and months in advance and like the more you plan the more you can actually translate your idea whether it's the video succeeding and engagement or whatever it is you know whatever you're setting out to do i've definitely learned that from the companies even in my early days of being more on the design side of fashion and sales side not so much the creative side i learned these people are designing and planning what the look is going to be like in two years so it's like i need to get my head on straight and like if i want to compete with any of these companies I got to have a plan. If I'm going to do this video, it's going to be teasing it this day, then a hard post this day with like a little another teaser, then a reel that, you know, whatever my strategy is for that launch, actually have a plan and do it and execute it. It's really easy to like say you're going to do things and whatever, but to do it is that's the next level. The last question to wrap up this interview, I'm going to like combine a couple questions together. I'm going back to like the original discussion that we started this interview with kind of working with models and working with higher status people. How do you go about approaching a model who is like, that's their job is to like model clothing comparatively to a higher status or influencer, how do you kind of approach both ends of like one approaching a model and then approaching an influencer with your rapport and like how you carry yourself around them and everything kind of what's the difference between them? It's a good, it's a good question. Cause it is, it is different. And every single shoot you want to, like I said, you you want to have fun and stuff. But every shoot brings different energy and vibes, whether if you're shooting a model who's a professional e com model and does this for a living and is very used to it, then it's a lot more uh, of, I would say, more of a team teamwork where we're working together because we both are more on the same page of the model knows like, OK, I need to stand. And especially after look one or two, you know, the model is really on the same page. They've honed in. They know exactly what face they need to do. They need to know like how to drape their body and all that stuff. So with a model i think it's it's obviously easier because you know you're working with a professional in that field specifically and then you take that same same concept and you apply it to then uh someone who is a personality or a celebrity or whatever it may be influencer most of the time they're not professional models while they're used to being in front of a camera they're not used to being uh photo uh they're used to being photographed, but it's weird where there's like, they're not used to the as intimate of a photography session. They're used to like people taking their photos as they walk by and stuff like that. You'll definitely need to coach them a little more, which then you have to realize that they're just a human at the end of the day, just like you. While some of them come with huge personalities and you need to navigate the accordingly they are still just a human and when you ask your friend to shoot or something they're not going to immediately strike a pose and look like this type of way with a model i can say a few words for example and they know what face i want them to make because you know they they can get the vibe and they've been around and they know the lingo whereas like an influencer or something or maybe a celebrity drewski for example he is a great example because he's on camera all the time and everything like that. He was a rare one that is a that I've shot that is a celebrity, but also a content creator. So he knew exactly he was like in tune on what angles, what we needed to get in the background, what we needed to, you know, what the vibe of the shoot was. And then also like, did we get it? Like, let's make sure we get it. And like really kind of like knowing the process of like, okay, like let's not rush things, let's do this, let's do this, let's try this out. Whereas other celebrities maybe will come in and be a lot more like clueless as to what you should do. So you like have to then again, forget who they are and just talk to them like a person and talk them through like, okay, like for this one, we're gonna sit you down here and we're gonna put this book in your hand and we're gonna, you know, we wanna convey this kind of message. So like, let's kind of, and then a lot of time it's a lot more coaching where you have to build up their personality a lot of times, even though they are huge personalities to the world, it's a little like uh, disarming when you get a camera lens right in your face to just make them feel comfortable really is like, at the end of the day, like that's the one like similar thing is like, you gotta make everyone feel comfortable, whether they're someone huge that is someone, even if they, if they think they're the biggest person on the planet, you know, you still have to, to make them have fun, enjoy you, easy to work with and all that stuff. So maybe that means taking a step back, let them be the big personality, let them be like, yo, take a picture of me like this. At the end of the day, you're there to capture like their essence too. If you're shooting a celebrity that has a personality or something, so you also want to let them be them.
So it's very different in terms of the relationship between the photographer and the and the model or whoever's getting shot. Both of them are still kind of the same in terms of you're having fun, you're respecting each other, and you're kind of just uh, consistent. Depending on the uh, person you're working with, it seems like uh, you might do a decent amount of coaching in a way, if you could call it that. Yeah, and then with the bigger personalities, they don't want to be coached as much. It's a little bit of a wrestle where you're kind of figuring out exactly like, okay, like, because I want to help them as much as possible, but I don't want them to think I'm stepping on their toes or making them think that they're not good at this or anything. You're kind of balancing those cards. It's like on set. You don't want to step too far. You want them to be comfortable. So that's why I said, though, if you have a big personality, then you kind of take a step back. You, You let them be them. You do that. You know, you can kind of steer them in their own way. But if they're that big of a personality, you can't tell them what to do and this and that and this and that, you know, they're going to do what they want to do. Thank you again for joining us, Jack. Do you have any socials in particular you want us to plug? I got my own page, which is at Creating Nelly. That's my photography page. I have, you know, all my portfolio and personal work on there as well. Closet Tours, which is the business. It's just Closet Tours, as it sounds, on Instagram. And um, yeah, those are, the, those are the handles. Wait, wait, I may have one more question. <laughs> Can I ask a quick question? Let's shoot. But I really wanted to pick your brain about your clothing line that you're making. Nelly, how long have you been into fashion? And where has that passion for actually making the clothes like come from? And how is like that entire process of actually hands-on making clothes and then releasing it to the public for your own collection it's funny because i think a lot of the reason that i did originally make my own clothes and what i do for myself like years and years ago was just take all like whether it was a levi's that i got from a thrift store or something and i would do some stitching or distressing and something on it to make it unique something that like only i had and that was my whole notion before was like wanting to wear something that no one else had that I made because like I said, photography is a lot of behind the computer and I like to use my hands and get creative. So that was one of my outlets as well was like a lot of sewing and painting and stuff like that. Through photography over the years, I was able to like network and meet a handful of people, obviously while wearing my clothes because that's the clothes that I wear. And they would all bully me or nice, you know, nicely. I was like, yo, I need a piece or I need this, I need this. It didn't matter who they were. They could be LeBron James or, you know, the top of whatever for you. I would just say no, because that's not what I did. Uh, I just made clothes for myself and that's it. And then all of a sudden, about six months ago, I was like, okay, you know what? Like, let's just go for it. I'm going to start with one collection. So I launched a brand called, my nickname's Nelly. So I launched a brand called N by Nelly, which here, right here, I'm playing with one of the cards. So this is the logo here. So I launched a brand that is that we do upcycle work. So we're taking a lot of Levi's, Carhartt, old pieces that have a lot of, you know, vintage fades and all work done on them. And we are putting new life into them. So we are, I keep saying we, that's just like, it's just me. It's just like, that's a side effect of running your own business for so long. You just start to think of one person as we. So I launched the first collection at the beginning of, or at the very end of January. And I have the next collection coming out in about, I don't have the date yet, but roughly a month or so. And it's going great. I have a handful of people who really, really like it. It's definitely high end stuff because I'm putting at least one to two weeks in each garment and only releasing all one of one stuff so it's definitely a very niche world of expensive one of one world i'm just trying to chill real quick real quick last question chill but yeah it's just about being as creative as possible um and like just getting everything out there like i i was like okay like if so many people want my clothes and want to do it let me just go ahead and go for it and it's been going great. I have a couple of clients who are in the NBA, a couple of clients who are influencers and do certain things. So, you know, so just slowly getting the brand out there as much as possible and just keep selling, you know, just keep going. That's been a really fun project of the last year, roughly. So it's been great. Awesome. Awesome. Yeah. It's really cool seeing your creation and see, actually seeing it when I was in LA with you and that like growing into fruition and everything. Yeah. A lot of fun to the control like the very beginning of what the clothes look like and then also the photo shoots and then the campaign and then also the e-com and then also build the website so like every single part of of m by nelly like i get to like fully build i even did the modeling for it which i'm not one to get in front of the camera too much but you know i needed to suck it up and just do it so so yeah literally every single thing in this from photos the 
making it to the website. It's just been a, just this labor of love to kind of create these living garments that, you know, I'm kind of like repurposing and giving new life to, as well as people, people buy way too much clothes. And I'm trying to like stop that somehow. I want them to start like putting more emphasis on the clothes that they're buying. And with this company, I want to like, re- I want to really push that idea of like, you don't need to go buy new flannels and new this and new this. You know, there's all these clothes that exist. And like, you know, if you want to do something special to it, to make it crazy, like, you know, there's people out there that can do that to the clothes that are already on this world. But we don't need to make more and more and more and more clothes of just the same old stuff, you know. It's like crazy. Like, how many jeans do we need on the world? How many flannels? How many jacks? Like, just kind of that notion. We need more personality within our clothes. And it's cool making a project. Because I've experienced this with like this company that we're making now with just like actually being able to focus all your time and energy into something that you creative. We want to fulfill out comparatively to like a client that you still have like creative control with clients work and everything, but you have like full creative control with like your own company and your own content that you're making or your own clothing line that you can actually like put your heart and soul into it. And it's really cool to see. It definitely lines up with photography as well too, a lot because with these pieces now I get to, um, I have a, I have a shoot planned out for two weeks where I'm doing a, like a campaign for the next collection and starting to do that. I always did my own personal projects where I shot various stuff that I wanted to shoot that wasn't client work, but now I get to do personal projects that go with my brand as well so it's kind of hand in hand they really work well together Mm -hmm. most definitely that wraps up the interview Woo! but yeah thank you again for coming on thank you again jack for joining us Uh, we kind of went over your socials already but yeah thank you again for joining us and giving us your time yeah of course it was great being here and uh hope you guys keep doing this and keep chugging along excited to see what it turns into that's a wrap that's a wrap that's a wrap